Welcome to another EV learning session. I'm Jeremy here with, um, with you all from All EV Canada. I'm going to talk about level two charging today. We've had a couple of inquiries about what kind of plugs, are they hardwired, how fast do they charge, what's available. So I thought I'd make a, a quick little video to give you the ins and outs of the chargers that we offer and, uh, and how they're different. So first of all, I'm going to show you what comes in a Tesla mobile charging kit. This comes inside a uh, with all Teslas and uh, and all EVs in fact come with a level one charger so a regular wall outlet will connect here and then this connects right into the vehicle you can add five to nine kilometers of range per hour it's plugged in and it's great to have when you're stuck you're in a pinch or or to take it to a friend's house but it's not the best ownership experience you want to be able to have a, a charger that's permanent that don't, you don't have to wrap up every time and the vast majority of people will get a level two charger. So there are some smart chargers and some regular chargers, or as some people call dumb chargers. This is a Grizzly here, really nice product, Canadian made, uh, waterproof, a big metal box, uh, quite robust. It's a really good price point uh, to charge your vehicle. We have EV Duty, and that's a Canadian product. This EV Duty is also a Canadian product. Uh, the difference with this one is it, it's in between. It has the potential to be upgraded to a smart charger where you get a lot more data on your phone about, about the, the, how much energy the vehicle is using and setting time of day settings um, and, and, or if you have time of day energy costs, uh, you can all enable that through the charger. But most electric vehicles will let you do that in the vehicle anyways. So this charger for $100, you can uh, upgrade it through the manufacturer to make it uh, a smart charger. It's got a really nice quality um, feel to it, you know, metal components. So the third charger here is the ChargePoint Home Flex. Really nice charger. The fit and finish, I'd say, is superior uh, to the other two that we looked at earlier. Um, the handle has a nice weight to it, nice metal components. It is uh, a NEMA 1450 plug, but it has a little bit more work that the, the charging cable has to be connected by your electrician. Uh, not a big deal at all. The real advantage of this charger is that it's a smart charger and as you can see you can use your phone app and you can view things like your charging costs, you can set a schedule uh, and, and the real advantage of these is electric utilities are rolling out a lot of pilot programs across the country including in Nova Scotia and if the utility wants to curtail the charger, reduce the power output of your charger because there's a high demand uh, you know, on the grid, they're able to do so. And when you enroll in a program like that, there's often financial financial incentives for you to, to do so. If we look at the smart grid side of things, there's a lot of potential of, of having the utility communicate with your vehicle and when there's excess renewable on the grid and you want to make sure your vehicle is charged with as much green electricity as possible, it can communicate and turn your charger on. So this future proofs it. When there's new programs that are, in, that are rolled out by the utilities, this is the type of charger that will enable you to do that. And it's the type of charger that's currently used uh, by Nova Scotia Power for their pilot program. So a really, really nice product, a little bit more expensive than your, than your basic charger, uh, but depending on your need, could be uh, totally worth it. So this Tesla charger here is a little bit different. This is a more powerful charger. We're looking at a 48 amp unit. So you're looking at putting a 60 amp breaker on this, and it will enable you to charge your car faster. This can enable 11.5 uh, kilowatts of power going into your vehicle, whereas the two other chargers we looked at there were 9.6. Now it's important to realize your electric vehicle let's say if you have an older one like a LEAF, may only let you charge at 3.3 kilowatts and you wouldn't be able to utilize the full potential of these chargers. Now one thing we do recommend is sometimes going for a slightly more powerful charger to future proof in case you change car in the future you wouldn't want to have to change charger. Now this Tesla unit does not have a NEMA 1450 plug. It needs to be hardwired by an electrician. They just run a wire and they connect it inside the charger. Any electrician can do this and it's as easy as, as one, two, three, and they bolt this right onto the wall. And all of these chargers, these three, not the Tesla, have the plug that's called a NEMA 1450. This is the same plug that you'll find in, um, outside connecting your hot tub, or you'll find connecting your oven in your kitchen. So it's a NEMA 1450, and, and it'll have a maximum rating of 40 amps for the chargers, so a 50 amp breaker at your home level. So for both the ChargePoint, the Grizzly, 
EV duty is a little bit less than that. And on the Tesla mobile kit, you can also have a little adapter that you put on it where you'd be able to charge it on a level two if you're in a pinch or if you have a cottage and you just want to plug this against the wall outlet without having to install a permanent charger, be able to just use this charger here. Now, if you have no garage and you're gonna charge this vehicle outside, you wanna make sure you have an outdoor rated receptacle. So this is a NEMA 1450 plug where, oh, let me see if I can do this here, um, plugs right into it easily and covers it so it's protected from the elements and your electrician can install that for you very easily. All right, so let's talk about adapters. What if you have one of these chargers at home and you own, let's say, a Chevy Bolt, but you have a friend that's coming to visit with their Tesla and they wanna charge up? Well. Te all Teslas come with this little adapter. It's a J1772 to Tesla. And all EVs except for Tesla have this end that's called a J1772. Plug it right in. And this would go directly into the Tesla. No problem, you're able to charge the vehicle. So if your friend owns a Tesla and you wanna drive your Hyundai Kona and charge up at their house when you're visiting, you can get an adapter like this here. So essentially the Tesla charger would have an end like this here would connect right into this uh, adapter and you could connect your, uh, your Kona in and charge it up overnight. So that summarizes our four available chargers, some of the adapters and some of the, the, the connection ports here. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, don't be, uh, don't be shy to reach out. We're always here to help. Thanks so much.